Starting Up Listening. Page 13. Task 1. Listen to the stories. A. The Big Brother. I had a great holiday. My parents finally let me stay with my best friend Sandra and her family for three weeks. Sandra's family owns a lovely cottage at the seaside. Her parents are really cool. They didn't bother us at all. We slept late, had big breakfasts, and then went to the beach. We swam and dived. I even tried water skiing once. It's so difficult. I don't think I ever want to try it again. It's definitely not my cup of tea. In the evenings, we took a walk to a nearby town, sat in cafes and chatted. Steve usually came along too. He is Sandra's brother, a great-looking guy just three years older than us. Very funny too. We spent a lot of time together. And you know what? I think I'm going to hang out at Sandra's place even more this year. B. A surprise from Sweden. I really wanted to go camping with my friends this summer, but my parents said no. I was too young for a holiday on my own. So we went to the mountains again, the same place, the same hotel. I was prepared for a terribly boring holiday. When we got there, it was raining. It rained for three days, and we were stuck at the hotel watching TV and playing cards. Then I saw her. Blue eyes, long blonde hair. So pretty I couldn't take my eyes off of her. For days I followed her from a distance. My eyes were glowing so much that my mom thought I had a temperature. One morning at breakfast, she came over to my table and asked me something. My heart was beating so fast I couldn't understand a thing. When she repeated her question, I realized she wanted to play tennis with me. Her name was Anita, and she was from Sweden. We became friends. The only problem was that my English was so bad, she had a hard time understanding me. Anyway, I've got her address and we'll keep in touch. And English is on the top of my list this year. Guess why? Lesson 1. Family and Friends Listening. Page 19, Task 1. Listen to the four dialogues. Dialogue 1. Hi, darling. How are things? How did your first school day go? Well, I'm a bit shocked. Most of the teachers seem to be very strict. Maybe they just want to impress you so that you work hard from the very start. What's your classmaster like? Oh, he seems very kind. He teaches history. He is the most popular teacher at school. Everybody says he is strict but fair. Good for you. Dialogue 2 What's the matter, Lisa? There's a school dance tonight. It starts at 7 and my parents want me to be back at 9. Everybody else can stay longer. Oh, you poor thing. Have you talked to them? Yes, but they go on and on about all the things that might happen to me. They are overprotective. How do you get on with your parents? Well, they are quite understanding, actually. They let me do most of the things as long as I do well at school. They know I'm a bit lazy. However, they are too ambitious. They want me to be top of the class. Dialogue 3 And how did it go? What do you mean? How did your first day with Paul go? Well, he's really amusing. He makes me laugh all the time. Oh, lucky you. I'm a bit jealous. Paul is a great guy. Yeah, I know. We'll see whether he'll call again. He said he'd call on Saturday. He will. He's very reliable. He always keeps his promises. Does he? But does he fancy me? I'm sure he does. Don't worry. Dialogue 4 Maria, you're going to meet my best friend tomorrow. She's coming to the cinema, too. Great. What's she like? She's a wonderful person to know, very friendly and helpful. Lucky you. Yeah, I like her very much because she always tells you what she thinks. She's the most honest person I know. I'm sure you'll like her. Page 21, Task 5. 
Listen to Emma's answers to the quiz above. Who is your best friend, Emma? Tara. Does Tara tell you her secrets? Yes, she always does. She knows she can trust me. She knows that I normally don't tell her secrets to anybody else. Why does Tara like spending time with you? We have a lot in common. Swimming, acting. We're a bit different in character, though. She is shy, while I'm more outgoing and chatty. What does your friend think when you are late? Ugh, that's a tough one. I'm often late. I know it's not nice, but I can't help it. What does she say if she doesn't like your new hairstyle? She always says what she thinks. She's very honest. Besides, I can tell when she is not telling the truth. You are cheating in the test. What? I don't cheat in tests. Let's say you are. Does Tara tell you it's not a good idea? Oh, yes. You don't normally cheat in our school because you get into trouble. Mr. Black is very strict about it. He always says he wants us to grow up into responsible adults. Does your friend know about your happy moments? Happy and sad, both of them. We are always there for each other. She's very caring. When my mom was ill last year, she was very helpful. Page 22, Task 4. Listen and read. Emma is phoning Tara. Hi, it's me, Emma. How are things? I'm bored. Do you want to come round to my place? I've got the new Sims. Cool. Yes, I'm designing a new character. What does she look like? It's a he. He's tall, a bit on the plump side. He's got shoulder-length straight hair. He's nice and understanding. He likes music, plays the guitar, is good at acting, and... Emma! And he is madly in love with a pretty girl called Tara. Get lost, Emma. That's Luke. I'll never tell you any of my secrets again. Sorry, Tara. I'm just teasing you. Yes, I see. And I don't feel like coming to your place anymore. Come on, Tara. Okay, then. See you in half an hour. Page 23, Task 6. Listen and read the dialogue. Eve is calling Luke. Hi, it's Eve here. Have you got any plans for the weekend? No. Why? We're going to the activity center. Would you like to come with us? Us? Yes, my friends Tara and Lee. I don't know. You know I don't like meeting new people. But you know them, I'm sure. They're in my class. Tara is tall and thin with long curly hair, often in a ponytail. Oh, Tara from the acting group. I know her. She seems very nice. Yes, she is. And Lee is short and thin, easy to talk to. He plays the violin. He likes music. All right, then. Let's meet in front of the activity center at 10. Lesson 2. A healthy lifestyle. Reading. Listen and read the text. Page 30. Task 2. Every person goes through five stages of sleep. To feel good, we need to go through each stage every night. During stages one and two, you sleep lightly. It's easy for someone or something to wake you. During stages three and four, you sleep deeply. It's not easy for anyone to wake you. You hear no sounds and see no lights. Then comes the last stage of sleep. It is called REM, rapid eye movement. This is the stage in which you dream. You breathe more quickly than in the previous stages. Your eyes move rapidly under your eyelids and you dream. There are all kinds of dreams, good ones, bad ones, and nightmares. You need your dreams. You dream more if you have a special problem. Dreams help you solve your problem and give you answers to some questions. Actually, you dream four to six times during the REM stage. Very often, you don't remember what you've dreamt about. If you have problems falling asleep, you should think about the following. A. Chocolate, tea and Coca-Cola have caffeine and they keep you awake. Try not to have them in the evening. B. Too much food makes it difficult for your body to relax. 
Think about how much you eat before you go to sleep. C. Exercise wakes you up. Don't exercise before bedtime. D. Your bed should be used for sleeping only. Eating, studying or watching TV shouldn't be done in bed. Remember, your body and mind need a good rest. Sleep keeps you healthy. So, good night, sleep tight. Listening and vocabulary. Page 35, task 4B. Listen and check if you were right. Children who eat proper breakfast learn and memorize things better. They are more interested and pay more attention in class. Research also shows that people who skip breakfast are more at risk of becoming fat than those who normally eat breakfast. It's best to have three main meals in a day and at least two smaller meals or snacks between the main meals. That way you will have enough energy all day. You will not get too hungry and overeat at the main meal. The snack should be some fresh fruit, some dried fruit and nuts, yogurt or some other healthy snack. How much water we have to drink actually depends on all the food that we eat in a day. We get water if we have soup for dinner or if we eat some fruit and vegetables. We can also get water from all the other drinks that we have in a day. It also depends on the outside temperature. We drink more if it's very hot, and it depends on what we are doing. If we are physically active, we have to drink more water. Portions are getting larger and larger nowadays. For example, one scoop of ice cream can be several times larger than it was in the past. We should all be aware of that at home, too. So keep your portions normal sizes and don't overeat. We should eat enough calories but not too many. It's important to get the right balance between the amount of calories we consume and the amount of calories our body uses. On average, we should consume 2,000 calories, but it all depends on your age, sex, height, weight and physical activity. We shouldn't put too much sugar and salt in our food. We often forget that a lot of foods already contain sugar. A lot of snacks and fizzy drinks do, for example. And although we use less salt at the table and in cooking, we still consume a lot because about 80% of the salt we consume is already in the foods that we buy. It's very important that you chew your food slowly. Very often we all eat in a hurry and sometimes we don't even have time to taste the flavour of the food we are eating. Take your time when you're eating and enjoy your food. Speaking. Page 41, task 2B. Listen to the extract of the radio program. Well, Professor, what is your opinion about what a person needs to live a long, healthy life? My advice for a long, healthy life is to get yourself an absorbing hobby. Hobbies teach us all sorts of things, and they do it in a rather pleasant way. For example, stamp collecting is more than just the gathering of little labels. It's our entry into the world of culture and history, at least for the last 150 years. Those little slips of paper celebrate national achievements and reveal historical events. The philatelists can learn, too, about money, geography, sightseeings and all the rest. Another hobby with international links is the cultivation of pen friends. There are pen friend agencies which will send you address to potential correspondents in a wide range of countries. And through your letter exchange, in the months and years that follow, a whole collection of interesting letters sent to you by all sorts of interesting people from foreign exotic places will come. In the process, if you are a stamp collector, you gain a good choice of specimen to add to your collection.
And both of these hobbies will give you at least a good amount of words from a very wide range of foreign languages. Look back. Page 51, task 9. Listen and read. What's wrong, Alison? I have a headache. Did you have anything to eat before school? I overslept and had no time for breakfast. I watched a late movie on TV last night. You should eat something in the morning, and you shouldn't stay up so late on a school night. I know, I know, but my headache is getting worse. Why don't you go to the canteen and have something to eat? I can't really. I think I have a temperature, too. Well, you'd better call your parents then and go home. Okay. Pages for readers. Page 54, task 1. Listen and read the story. The Devoted Friend Adopted from The Devoted Friend by Oscar Wilde Once upon a time, said Elinid, there was an honest fellow named Hans. Was he famous? asked a water rat. No, answered the Elinid. I don't think he was famous at all, but he had a kind heart and a funny, round, good-humored face. He lived in a small cottage all by himself, and every day he worked in his garden. In all the countryside there was no garden so lovely as his. Different flowers grew there, and they bloomed or blossomed, so that there were always beautiful things to look at. Hans had many friends, but the most devoted friend of all was Big Hugh the Miller. Indeed, so devoted was the rich Miller to Hans, that he would never go by his garden without filling his pockets with plums and apples if it was the fruit season. Real friends should have everything in common, the miller used to say. And little Hans nodded and smiled, and felt very proud of having a friend with such noble ideas. Sometimes, indeed, the neighbors thought it was strange that the rich miller never gave little Hans anything in return though he had a hundred sacks of flour in his mill and six cows and many sheep. But Hans never troubled his head about these things, and nothing gave him a greater pleasure than to listen to all the wonderful things the miller said about the unselfishness of true friendship. So little Hans worked away in his garden. During the spring, the summer and the autumn he was very happy. But when the winter came, and he had neither fruit nor flowers to bring to the market, he suffered a lot from cold and hunger, and often had to go to bed without any supper. In winter he was very lonely, as the miller never came to see him. There is no good in my visits to Hans while there is snow, the miller said to his wife, because when people are in trouble, no visitor should bother them. This is my idea about friendship, and I am sure I am right. So I shall wait till the spring comes, and then I shall visit him, and he will be able to give me a large basket of roses, and that will make him so happy. You are certainly very thoughtful about others, answered the wife, as she sat in her comfortable armchair by the fire. Very thoughtful indeed. It is quite a pleasure to hear you talk about friendship.